So today we're looking at support.com. Now, of course, support.com has been in the news quite a bit over the last few days as the price has rallied to all time highs. And of course, a lot of people starting to question the sanity of the price movement and also trying to figure out what the real value of the company is. So with that said, I wanted to jump into the finances, jump into the actual data behind the company and figure out exactly what's going on. Before we jump into this video, can I please ask you a huge favor? Can you click on the like button below this video? This helps us rank these videos and just by clicking that like button, you help support this channel. So of course, looking at the homepage of support.com, there is a big clue as to why the price has been rallying recently. So of course, a Bitcoin miner, Greenridge Generation Holdings and support.com uh, announced a merger agreement. So this is one of the reasons why it started to rally, but there's another reason. And that is of course, because the Wall Street bets guys have got hold of the stock. Now, one of the reasons they've got hold of the stock is because of the Bitcoin element that's coming into this. And so with that said, I wanted to really jump in and have a look at the financials and figure out just how much value is currently behind the company. And of course, we are probably going to be excluding some of the merger data right now because that is yet to properly happen. We still need to see full integration. But looking at the company itself, we can see support has had its price just absolutely go through the roof over the last while. I mean, that's a complete vertical climb in terms of the price. And if we come down and have a look at the stock, these are the key data points that you need to know. Of course, the market cap just under 500 million. The share price on the 10 year, 1005, currently trading at 1970. There is currently no PE ratio on the stock, a negative profit margin of negative 8.53%. They have a very small equity at 34 million. And of course, that equity to market cap pretty low at 7.2%. Then there is, of course, no dividend on the stock, which means that after dividend, uh, they still have a positive free cash flow because, of course, no dividend going out, but it's a mere 307,000. So if you have a look at this in relation to the actual market cap, it tells you that this stock is probably mostly driven by investors' money. So if we come down and we have a look at the year on years, it's exactly what we suspect. So having a look at the number of shares outstanding, if I can give them one positive point, and that is that on the three year number of shares outstanding and on the trailing 12 months, there has been an increase, but it's been very, very marginal. So the share dilution has been pretty minimal. However, if we look at assets, these have halved over the last three years. And then if you come down to uh, total equity, look at this 47 currently sitting at 34. So this company has actually been going backwards for a little bit now. And then having a look at total revenue, pretty much the same picture, 69 down to 39. And this pretty much follows everything if you go down here. Of course, the key takeaways as well is that operating income is of course in the red, net income is in the red. And if you take a look at these free cash flows and operating cash flows, not only are they in decline, but these are very, very small numbers, especially expressed as a percentage against the equity in the company, expressed against the market cap and expressed against total revenue. So definitely a lot of issues here on the stock straight out the gates. So coming down to our 12 point fundamental checklist now, if you are not familiar with the way we value stocks here on the channel, we do a combination of both what some people would classify as growth investing, as well as what others would call value investing. We like to just call it investing. And so basically, we look at key fundamental items. We want to see a little bit of momentum in certain areas, as well as a lot of rigidity in terms of making sure they, they fall within certain criteria on other things. Now, if you are interested in figuring out why we have these specific 12 questions, we have got a video out on the channel called the 12 point checklist. Definitely go and search that off the homepage of our channel and uh, it'll give much more detail about why we have this specific list. Now, just coming back to my checklist, the first question I ask is, has the share price doubled since inception on the 10 year? Now, of course, this came pretty close. If we have a look at the stock price, we can see a 1005, 1970. But in reality, we are being strict and we have to mark according to our rules. So unfortunately, they get marked down. 
The next question we have is, does the company have a P ratio between one and 25? And unfortunately there's no P ratio, so we have to mark them down. They're in the negative in terms of profit margin, so they also get marked down over there. Next, we're looking at assets and liabilities. We wanna know that there's positive net equity, and certainly in that regard, they do meet the criteria. We're also looking for companies where the dividend cost is less than free cash flow. We wanna make sure that companies are not paying out dividends uh, from their free cash flow, and beyond that, uh, obviously having to take on debt. Now, of course, there is no dividend, so by default, they get a check mark here. And that's pretty much where they end on the check mark. So, you know, obviously on share dilution, we have to give them a negative mark. On total revenue growth, they have to get a negative mark. Same for gross profit. The same pretty much for operating income, net income from continued operations, operating cash flow, and then of course, free cash flow. All of those just not meeting that criteria. We're looking for three years, year on year growth. Now, before we get to the verdict, I know that a bunch of people watching this video, especially people who are coming here from Reddit and Wall Street Bets, looking for the answer that they're wanting. Pretty much the way my wife searches Google, which is go through the results until you find something that suits your agenda. The fact of the matter is we provide completely unbiased opinions here. We look at the data, we look at the metrics, and we do not let emotion sway us. And so the fact of the matter is that there are a lot of people that are bullish on the stock and certainly that probably is gonna push the stock price for a little bit. But the question is when the hype dies down, what happens? Well, the reality is these stocks usually go back to exactly what they should be valued at. And that is pretty much based on the fundamentals of the company. So if we come down to the verdict, this is pretty much where we're at. On the fundamentals, they're pretty much scoring 16% uh, positive, 83% negative. And by the way, the analysts on this are pretty much less than bullish. <laughs> you can say at three bucks per share, which is currently where they think the stock is going. And by the way, if you look at the current pricing, currently sitting at 1971, one would say that this is extremely overvalued in terms of what the analysts are calling. Now, if we have a look at this return on equity, if we have a look at the return on asset, and we have a look at return on invested capital, all of these are in the red. So there's just absolutely no ways that this is going to continue to grow without it be, being purely a sentiment-based play, pretty much like GameStop and AMC. So I know that I'm gonna really ire a lot of people here watching this video. A lot of people are gonna be very irked with the opinion that I have, but I base this on the fundamentals. I wouldn't touch the stock with a barge pole. I think three bucks is a fair assessment of probably where the stock should be at the end of 12 months. That being said, the market obviously is reacting in irrational ways. And I don't buy stocks, I buy companies. And so this company for me is worth nothing at this moment in time. It's not even worth its three bucks per share to be perfectly honest with you. That being said, we need to see what happens with the merger. We need to see the strength that the merger and acquisition brings to the party in terms of changing the financials over the next year or two. But I firmly believe that this was an acquisition based on using investors' money to try and steady and right the ship. And so frankly speaking, I think this stock is gonna lose you a lot of money, close to 100% on your money, to be honest with you, if you invested at today's price. So my honest opinion on this stock is to sell. Get out of it. You shouldn't be investing in the stock. And if you are in it and you're following the Reddit sub uh, forums and you think that the stock is gonna to continue to climb, well, good for you. Um, by all means, go ahead and speculate, but let's not call it investing. Let's call it what it is. It is a speculation play. And certainly there's no harm in speculating. I don't have anything against anybody speculating. I think it does have merit in your portfolio. The problem I have is when people put stocks forward like this and claim that this is an investment and claim that this stock is going to the moon, quote unquote. Reality of it is this stock is going nowhere. It is dead in the water. And if the price continues to move, Guaranteed there's gonna be people who come into the comment section and say to me in a few weeks time, Justin, this video is not aging well. And I'm gonna give you the same response I give on every single video that I put out similar to this, which is please go and buy the stock, hold it for four years, and then let's have the same discussion. Because I guarantee you, unless they fix their financials, unless they fix their fundamentals, this company is going to continue to hemorrhage cash. And the cash that it's hemorrhaging is the investor's money. Go and look at the balance sheet, go and look at the income statement, go and look at the actual revenues in the company, and it will be as clear as day. So the problem I have for most people coming across here, commenting on these videos like this, is that they generally wanna see an answer that you know suits their agenda. They wanna know that the stock is going to the moon. Well, I'm very sorry to tell you, there are no fundamentals behind this company right now, 
as it stands. And unless something changes drastically, my opinion won't either. Before you go, I'd just like to let you know that you can get access to all of our courses absolutely free of charge. There's no fees to pay, no Patreons to join, and all you have to do is visit our homepage of our website and click on the sign up button. Link is supplied in the description down below. Now, you'll get access to our stock investing course, our real estate investing course, as well as some really great courses on managing your personal finances. And of course, if you're not already subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe and join our Money Tribe here on YouTube, you'll get access to daily stock analysis videos, crypto analysis videos, as well as some really great personal finance content. And of course, all you have to do to subscribe is click on the subscribe button below this video. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to turn on notifications so that you get notified whenever we add new content here on YouTube.